pocket full of money and turns around and walks off. Well, you already have the money. Are you thanking them for the money? Where they can get petting. Yeah. Then to say they're 
healed. Because we say they're healed, they quit getting bit. Right? Come on and say, right? Keep your sickness. Quit being so silly about it. Right. Amen. And start saying it. Right. And walk into it. That's right. What are you trying to do? Make something happen? No, <laughs> I don't have to make nothing happen. I'm saying God will make it happen. Amen. He always has. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's right. Who'll be first? Sing a song. <coughs> testify. Had a testimony. testimony. Come on. Can I tell it here or? Come on up here. We'd rather have it up here where everybody can see you. Mm -hmm. We can hear you. 
Well, he was out here preaching on love and, and forgiveness and love. And I was back there wondering, was I going to live for the next five minutes? I was so sick. Everything I have eaten for two weeks, I think, was coming out of me. I've never had anything like this before. Just like pins and needles sticking all over me. And I thought, I'm fixing to faint. So I really, I, and I thought, if I could just make it to Brother Sam's chair and stretch out for a minute, I'll, I'll be all right. But I knew there was no way I could get up and go in there. And in a few minutes, here comes Lisa. And I know she's not going to mind me telling you this. And she said, Sister Gail, is there anything I can do for you? And I said, Lisa, just, no, just pray. I'm so sick. And so, and she said, well, I'm going to go stand back outside for a few minutes and give you some time in here by yourself. And she came back in a few minutes and said, are you all right? And I said, yes. But she, this precious little, she got down. I don't know if she was on her knees or what. She had to be and reached in the bathroom and took hold of my ankle. And you know what? All of a sudden, I just started feeling better and, and better. And I told her, I said, Lisa, I'm feeling better. Amen. And I said, just let me be here for a few minutes, you know. And I just started feeling better and better. And Lisa, thank you. I thank God for right. touching Amen. me through you. Amen. And so he's Amen. out here preaching, and it's happening back there in the right. bathroom. Glory. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody else? Who'll be next? Just a word? Sing a song? Come on, sister. We want you up here where everybody can see you. Where everybody can hear you. Amen. Right. Um, when Brother Sam just mentioned that, you know, when I came up, for prayer, I was talking. To, I've been talking to Sister Gail about it. Here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here. Okay. Thank you. And um, that experience that I had. Um, what was the mystery about it, or if that's the right word to use? <coughs> I had so much stuff on my mind to say. And sometimes brother say have a hard time understanding me, you know, <laughs> sometimes with the accent. And I'm saying to myself, how am I going to explain all this? How am I going to get it out? But that's what I was really thinking too. How was, am I going to get it out? And the music and everything playing. And when he said, you have what you asked for, right. the first when he said it the first time, a doubt came through my mind. Sure. And he looked me in the eye and he said it again. And I guess that is when it really hit home. Amen. And since after that, I just want to say that I feel different. Hallelujah. I believe I am a different person. Right. Hallelujah. And I believe that I'm redeemed. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Who's next? Come on, you sing, get up, sing a song, do whatever. I think Brother Dutch probably got something to say. Brother Dutch needs something to say. Brother Dutch wants to sing or does he got something to say? Come on up, do either one of them. The both. The both of them. That'd be fine. You know, I'm almost married to something. I'm almost married to something. Please, please. Thank you. I love you too much for that. God bless you. I'd like to say praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And my, my dad used to say better late than never. Yeah. By half time I've always run late. Amen. But, uh, I'm glad we're here tonight. Amen. 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 Wouldn't have missed it for nothing. I Amen. certainly enjoyed that. Enjoyed yes. the, Amen. the ministry there, Brother Jason. Amen. That's the Amen. truth. All right. Right. Over the years, how many, you know, I've, I've not got near as many years in as, as <coughs> Brother Sam you do there, but uh, over the years I have seen over and over just a root of bitterness get in somebody's life. Right. right. You yeah. know? Right. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 good folks. Sure. Just good folks. Mm -hmm. yep. Don't mean no no harm to anybody. Right. We give you the shirt off their backs. Mm -hmm. Right. We've all been there. I can say yeah, that about sure. ourselves so many times. You know. That's right. But they just some some little something get down on the <laughs> inside, and and they don't the people don't necessarily have to even say it. It's right. just something you. Mm -hmm. You, you, you perceive something you say well they don't like me or they right. did this right. or that or whatever and and you know it it struck me one time and I'm not going to preach but I know go ahead. but it, <laughs> you gonna give me an hour no I'm just kidding I'd like to see you go out <laughs> Think nothing worse than getting a reputation for a moment of this preacher I'll tell you what but you know it struck me one time about who's telling the truth and you know, we could say, well, I saw I saw Brother Dale. I saw Brother Wade do such and such a thing. And you know what? With these natural eyes, we might have seen it. Right. We could have actually saw it. Right. right. But what these natural eyes didn't see between the time we saw him exactly. do that and the time right. we started to speak that to somebody or do right. something might have just been Brother Wade getting down on his knees. Right. Right. And said, oh, God. Right. Exactly. I, I shouldn't right. have done that. Right. Or I shouldn't have right. said that. And then yes, we right. go forth and we say, well, I know my brother. I yeah. know he did this and that. I want to ask you something. Who's the liar then? Right. 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 Brother Wade, when he says, I, listen, you know, I did. It's under the blood. Or the right. brother would sit Glory. there and say, well, they did this. and No, no. Mm -hmm. Because you see, in the, in the eyes of right. God, right. he never did it to begin with. Right. 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 When Brother Brandon begins teaching and preaching on justification, he's not saying here that, you know, it's not just as though they didn't do it. He said they right. didn't do exactly. it to begin right. with. Amen. They right. never did that. Right. Amen. You know, we ought to be the most freest yeah, people Lord, on the face yeah. of the earth. Yeah, that's right. Because we can raise our hands and say, oh, yeah. Lord, Amen. That's right. I am the redeemed. Amen. Amen. I am the redeemed. Right. But you know, when you're saying I am the redeemed, you're saying that God has taken you from some place. Right. Yep. Some place that was out there, and he put you back where you were at to begin with. Mm -hmm. Where were you at to begin with? He right. said he created them in his own image. In perfect he right, created right. them Amen. in the very right. image of God. Amen. 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 When he spoke you, he spoke a perfect right. individual. Right. He spoke a perfect life. Right. He spoke a life that, that has no doubts, that has no right. pain, that has no hurt. Amen. You know, Brother, Brother Dale, I really believe when you were sitting there and, and you, were, you were struggling trying to say, well Lord I believe and I'm going to do that anyways. Right. Brother Branham said, when you recognize that the Word right. of God is eagle right. food, right. you've heard from your theophany. Right. Yeah. And at a time when we're sitting there and that, that, that Word of God might have been, by His stripes I'm healed. Right. It might have been, you know, to speak the Word, speak to this mountain, it shall be moved. But right. you know, when you begin to feed on that Word, right. you're hearing from that body right. that He right. created before right. the foundation right. of the world. Right. You're hearing from that Word of God. Right. Right. Amen. And Brother Brown said that body is, is what, I forget what year he said this. He said, but it's just not even 20 feet away. Right. right. Anyway, I'll just say this is my personal belief here, belief here tonight, but I believe we're closer than 20 feet right. away. Right, right, man. Exactly. 2012 was a rough year. I'll just be honest with you, buddy. I don't know how we made it through in a lot of ways. It's been, it's been rough. And, and, and I don't look for it to be any better, right. naturally, no. physically speaking, in 2013. Right. It'll probably right. be even a lot harder. Right, right. But you know what? I'm going to be closer to my Amen. God Glory. in 2013. Right. Right. That I was in 2012. Yeah, Amen. Right. I'm going to be closer right. to my theophany right. in 2013 right. yes. than I was in 2012. Right. Yes. Why? Because I'm going to keep feeding on this eagle fruit. Right. Yes. Right. Right. That's it. And we we right. got a lot to be happy. Amen. Right. 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 We got a lot to rejoice right. over. Right. Amen. 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 Every, every situation that you went through back through this past year. I told the church at home, I said, my, you know, we look at the different things. Well, I've got this problem and I've got that problem. And oh yeah, my, yeah. if you only knew, Brother yeah. Sam, what I've been going yeah, through. Well, and yeah, and yeah, this right. and that and everything else. Right. And, 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 and I said, you ain't got no problems. Yeah. Now that's a hateful thing for a preacher right. to say. Yeah. Right. That's a hateful thing for somebody that oh, has yeah. no be a preacher. Everybody knows preachers ain't got no problems. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a hateful thing for somebody that's got the easy life, you know, yeah. to, to say to somebody that's out there working and struggling and having this and that and everything else. But so, since you ain't got a problem in the world, right, 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 you've got opportunities. Right, glory. Right. 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 It's an opportunity for God to show Himself Amen. great in your life. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I thank God for all the exactly. opportunities. Yeah, right. Amen. Exactly. What's the song? God will make this trial a blessing. Right. Amen. Amen. He has. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you, Saint. Amen. 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 Amen.
sisters come and get ready on to say this. You know, Brother Dutch was talking about say if Wade was over praying and there you are doing talking about how bad he is. He's asking God to forgive him. You know, being pastor puts you in a position. I remember a brother here one time, he said, if anybody that ever says anything says, I'll bring the stone and let's see who can throw the first one. I said, brother, if you bring the, throne, the stone, I have to throw it. I said, because I'm pastor. That's serious. I said, I got to throw the stone. Whether I want to or not, I got to throw it because I'm the pastor. But you see, I used to worry about that being pastor where the Bible says turn such as one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. That used to bother me because as pastor, maybe sometime I'd have to do it. I searched diligently to find the answer. I found one day where that you can't turn somebody over to the devil. I know you're thinking the Bible says it. He said, the Bible says, turn such a one over to the devil. No. You're not reading. You're reading what you want to read. I found where the prophet said it this way. He said, you turn that person over to God. Amen. He said, then they turn them over to the devil. He, God does, you know. Mm -hmm. See, because I can't turn him over to the devil. Because like I said, what if it was Wade and I'm turning him over to the devil? He's over there praying. And he's asking God to forgive him, and I'm over here trying to kill him. Right? Right. But see, the Bible says exactly right. The prophet gave us understanding. See, then that way you just bring them. You've got to go through stages. You've got 30 days examples to go and somebody to witness what you're doing. And then you bring them before the church. And then you loose them for God to do what he wants to. He said he'll put a devil after them. You'll bring them to the right, right place. Right, absolutely. And it ain't you having to do it. Right. You see him doing his work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>
song, maybe some, maybe some cream up in here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be a group thing tonight. I would have liked to sing tonight. What? We're going to all sing. Yeah, but you sing one by Somebody come on. You and Dick sing one together. You know, we, we have yeah, a day off. You know, we, we have an international church around here. We have people from all over the world. We have them from Zimbabwe, Trinidad, Kenya, and then we got Sister Regina. got to love each other. So we talk about each other a lot. <laughs> I, uh, you know, you talk about being <coughs> truthful and, and everything, you know, and not complain, and be negative and everything, but what I tell is the truth. I believe it's the truth, you know. But let me tell you what, I doubt there's anybody in this house right now as old as I am. And I'm going to tell you that. I prayed when I left the house today, Lord, you either give us back tonight in the morning or rapture us out of your mouth. Right. Amen. And, you know, and uh, I don't, uh, ever how long we got to go, I don't have it long the rest of you. I will roof up above me. I will good place.
sick and raise the dead, cause the lame to walk, the dumb to talk, and he calls the blind to see. I wasn't there, but their faith I years that we all found out that I don't bounce too good. <laughs> <laughs> Fell through that roof and uh, made a mess out of me. Uh, and thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing me through it. Amen. And thank you, Lord, for my church family. Uh, we all went through it together. And, uh, you know, being surrounded by people like you, uh, you wouldn't let me give up. That's right, buddy. Amen. Yes, right. Nobody. That's right. But anyway, I, I thank the Lord every day. Right. Brother Dale, he said, I don't want to give the devil credit for hurting. You know, right. I don't either. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Over six years now. And I'm not bragging on the devil. Right. right. But I don't know of a day that I hadn't hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I know 
But, uh, I know what keeps me going. Amen. Yes, Lord, give me strength to make another. Yes, right. Amen. And He does. Yes, and are you? Uh, I've been hunting with Brother Dale, <laughs> both Brother Dale, and Brother Wade. I'll see you about that. <laughs> we went to Kansas. And uh, I didn't think there was any mountains out there. <laughs> but me and Brother Dale, we walked up out of a river basin. Just like this, just straight up. And I told him, I didn't know that I come here to, to go mountain climbing with him. But I came out all pretty easy, didn't he? And that was only just a few months after after the Lord used those doctors to put me back together. Yeah. And, uh, but I thank you for, uh, for everything. Yeah. Glory. Amen. All honor, glory, and praise goes to the Lord. Glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. When a man lays in the hospital for over two weeks, talking and laughing. Every day. Doctor say we got to do so and so. He said, "Just get on with it." Y'all know that wasn't real me. He ordered no. He said, well, I'm <laughs> Two weeks or more. He lay there and talked and lied and went on. One day he woke up. He's a miracle. Working God. He was busted up, never formed. Had to do all kind of operations, had to do all kind of mendings and fix them. But he's still God. Amen. Amen. Stayed there in the hospital so long, so much, so they thought I was his daddy and <laughs> Joyce was his mother. <laughs> Somebody came to the hospital one day looking for him. They said, where is Danny Fountain? They said, well, his mom and daddy just took him down to x -ray. It's no joke. For, a week, for two weeks, we ate and slept in the hospital. But God brought him through. Who's next? There's a, there's a lady back there, a sister back there, I asked the other day, she sang. Not today, and I, not not right now. And I said, "Well, how about 15 minutes from now?" Yeah. Like that. Sister Jackson, back there, she might want to sing for it. And this brother, on, this sir. brother that's come with us tonight, if you make a little music or sing or whatever, come on, sister. Don't be bashful. Right. Even the road rest of them are bashful. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I guess so, Aaron, for one. Because yeah, we see, we believe God is real. Amen. And I'm not one bit behind on one thought. I'm looking forward to the greatest year that yeah. we've ever had. Amen. That's right. Yeah. He said, "What if the rapture don't come? So what if it does? Where are you at? Amen. If it don't, I'll say next year. This is the greatest year of my life. Amen. That's right. See, my testimony is always positive. Amen. Amen. All is well. He's right on time. There's nothing out of cater. He said, well, how come we're here 40-something years after the prophet left the scene? Why did Israel have to stay almost 40 years in Egypt because of rejecting Moses? It wasn't God's fault. It was people's fault. Do you know when they got to crying out and wanted to be delivered? Yeah. They were delivered. Right. Yeah. But around said each age falls and goes to the ground. He said a people starts crying out for deliverance. He said God opens up another age right. and brings another right. message another time. Mm -hmm. Come on, sister, and I'm just talking to y'all get here. Okay. Uh, let's uh Remember Sister Amy Cashane. Right. Yeah. Right. She and her family. Mm -hmm. If if you know, if old Satan Slewfoot ain't working on anybody, right. 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 he's working on that family. Right. 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 Oh, that's that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Remember that. Just keep her in your prayers. The faith is a simple thing. It's believing in God. Right, Accepting what He said. And then just thank Him for it. Right. Amen. Then go say and thank God for my healing. Right. You remember the blind man that Brother Randall had told he was healed? And for days he was out there saying, extra, extra, seven to five <laughs> and don't. My stripes, I'm healed, I can see. He sits down in a barber's chair and the barber's cutting his hair and the barber's kind of making light of him. He said, I thought that man sold you good heal. He said, by his stripes I can see. And about that time his eyes came open. Right. And he goes running the streets. Right. Amen. It's not for us to question whether right. God, what time it is. Right. Amen. It's for us to believe in right. God. Amen. Exactly. exactly right. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Oh, it is an honor for the
sing or testify or whatever. Give us a word of the Lord. It's been five years since we've been back now. And I'm so thankful to you. Uh, a lot of you don't know, but I was in pretty bad shape. I, I mean, health-wise, I, I hadn't walked with a cane. I was told when uh, when I left the church that I'd be dead in six months. And it's been over five years. <laughs> 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 and I'm so thankful to be here today. God bless you all. Amen. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Brother Richard sitting in a wheelchair down in front of a church one time. I wouldn't have given him two weeks to live. That's right. I was really afraid to pray for him because it was kind of a touchy situation. I made my way around. Finally just got over to him, just laid my hands there. That's the Lord touching. I believe God can heal. Paul mentioned to me whenever uh, he heard uh, Brother Dick singing a song one time in service, he said he loved this song. It's when we all get to get heaven. I did want to take a quick moment and, and give a little bit of a testimony that about my life yes, sir. and the things that I had done. Uh, you know, I used to teach Sunday school years ago here yep. and turned my back on God and walked away and did what I wanted to do instead of what he wanted me to do. Right, uh, unfortunately, I paid dearly, both physically, emotionally, <laughs> psychologically, and yeah. financially. Yes, sir. Okay? In every aspect, I've been hit. Uh, you know, it's... Uh, it's been kind of tough because I've lived every kind of wrong that you could ever think of. I've tried to drown my problems in alcohol, smoking, tobacco, all kinds of stuff. Okay? But I never found the answer. And uh, it took going to war, seeing some horrible things, and coming back and realizing exactly what I had right in front of me the whole time. And... God took him, He made a difference in my life. Yes, sir, he did. He's, he, he caught me at my weakest moment and snatched a hold of me yes, and showed me just how weak I really was. No matter how physically strong I've been right. most of my life, right. my physical strength meant nothing. That's right. And my sons, they love singing with me. And for a long time, while I was doing my thing, I couldn't sing a gospel song all the way through. Sure. My voice stopped. I couldn't sing. And everybody knows that I love to sing. And I asked God that if, whenever He brought me back, not if, but when He brought me back, right. that I could have my voice back, mm -hmm. that I could sing. Amen. And I would sing for the rest of my days. And give Him, give honor to Him mm -hmm. through singing. Yes, sir. Amen. And now my little boy here wants to sing the song with me. Amen. And we actually, whenever he heard it, he wanted me to download the song on my phone. The only one I could find was Alan Jackson <laughs> singing it, okay? You know what? I mean, I still got the song on my phone. And we're sitting there singing it at the house. He said, Daddy, he said, I think I like, we, I like the way we sing it better in church. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's, that's fine. That's right. said, Lord, you know what? That, yep. That's great. Amen. So we're going to give it a shot. All right? And I always tell Sister Esther that I'm terrible with keeping with music, so hopefully he'll be able to do a better job than I will. <clears throat> 
keys they keep. I have no idea. <laughs> y'all move a little bit to where okay. you can get you better. Let's move over this way a little bit and he'll be able to hear us too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Where you want to start? You want to start the, uh, at the chorus or the very, uh, very top? What song is it? Uh, it's uh, when we all get to heaven. Page, page 166 in the spiral. 166. And if y'all want to sing with us, be my guest. Because <laughs> as everybody up here in the group that is going to sing here in a little while found out, I sing better with other people. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansion, right and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to hell. Bible does say, forsake not 
the assembly Amen. of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and I know some of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but so much the more. Yeah. As you see the day approaching, do right. you see the day approaching? That's right. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's the point. Yes, yeah, sir. If you really see the day approaching, if right. you really see it, you'll do something about right. it. Right. Glory. Amen. If you don't, you won't. You won't. Right. That's, that's right. very a very simple equation. That's right. right. Amen. That's right. Very simple. You know, the Lord has been so good to me. Amen. One song says he set my captive spirit free. Right. Amen. I'm in a brand new world yep. since the Lord saved me. Yeah. Right. I've been in that new world now about 33 years. Amen. Fact, Amen. Is, Amen. fact is, the eighth day of this month is fixing to come in. The eighth day of this month will mark 33 years. Amen. That I've been in this brand new Amen. world. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, when I step out there into this wonderful creation and I look up in that sky and at them trees, you know, from time to time it comes back to me all over again. Them's brand new trees right there. <laughs> you know. That's right that I'm looking at. I believe the Bible said something about, or maybe it's a song that says, the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Right. That's right. Yes, sir. <coughs> and you know, everything that the Lord made praises Him, you except right. for lost humanity. Right. That's right, brother. Yeah. So I thank the Lord for delivering me from a wicked life of sin yeah. 33 years Amen. ago. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You would have had to know how it really was. And if you had known how it really was, then you would have had to have a lot of that thing that we've been talking right. about here tonight called faith. Right, right exactly. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, you would have pulled out your little book and you would have marked my name out. And That's right. right. Forget it. Right. You see, the thing about me was I was raised to know mm -hmm. what I needed to do. And as I come into my teenage years and the Lord began to strive upon the waters of my soul. And I walked into that valley that's called the Valley of Decision. And I made a decision. Right. Mm -hmm. And the decision that I made was a bad yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. And I walked out into this dark world of sin. And I got so lost out there. That what it actually come down to with me, Brother Dale, was that I decided that <coughs> I would be an atheist. Yeah. Okay. Now what can the Lord do for somebody like that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he done for a lot of them. He cut them off. Yes, right. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's what he done for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. He right. cut them off. Right. <coughs> he didn't cut me off. Thank you. Thank Glory. you. Well, I had somebody that was ringing the prayer bells. <laughs> Brother, they was ringing them regularly. <laughs> now, I know what this brother's talking about right here when he talks about being delivered unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I understand what he's talking about when he said we don't deliver them unto Satan, we deliver them to God, and then God does whatever's right. 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 in the best interest. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes it looks like, sometimes, as we say, he cuts them off. But right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But anyway. I had somebody that was praying for me. Glory. Come on, man. I had an old daddy. Come on, man. 
He's been gone nearly two years. He was praying for me. And uh, I remember a time as I began to get into that dark world of atheism. And I was running from the call of God and there ain't no other way to run but in the darkness and unbelief. That's the only way to run. That's where you're going if you run from God. You ain't running into the light. You're running out of the light and away from the light. So I was running and I was running from God and I began to run into that dark world of atheism because I didn't choose to believe that I was going to hell even though I knowed I was mm -hmm. unless I turned. Mm -hmm. Well, one uh, day I still lived at home. I might have been 16 years old. I was uh, around the house. I can't remember exactly what all I was doing. I still lived at home. I was around the house. Uh, I can't remember for sure exactly what I was thinking about that day, but most likely that's what I was thinking about. Because that's what I thought about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Was how that I don't believe in God and I'm going to disprove His existence in any way that I can. Yeah. Mama, go to the library and get me some books yeah. about UFOs. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I want to know more about that. Well, poor Mama, she, she done anything the little boy wanted her to do. <laughs> She went to the library and brought back a big stack of books about UFOs. And I started reading about UFOs. Because the way I looked at it, if you could prove UFOs, you could disprove God. And that's, that, seems, that seems to be the way that, 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 uh, that the big brains of the world look at it. Because they're always looking out yonder, gazing at them stars and at them planets to see if there's any water. Yeah, right. Or if there's any molecules, yeah, right, right. <coughs> or living cells, or dead right. cells that they should say they used to be alive, yeah. they're always a looking, brother, yeah. trying to find it. They're yeah. looking diligently to find it because evidently they believe if they do, they've won this war against God, against yeah. the belief right. of the li in the living God. Right. Right. Well, that's the road I was taking. That was the, si the decision that I was making. One day I was around the house. And I, I come into the house and I went into my room and laid down on the bed. And as I said, I don't remember exactly what I was thinking, but most likely my mind was on the atheistic thoughts that I was entertaining in my mind all the time back in them days. Mm -hmm. Well, I laid down on my bed and I was laying there and on the other side of the wall, I could hear my daddy praying. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. His room was right on the other side of the wall from my room. I was laying there and I could hear my daddy praying and there wasn't nothing unusual about that. Right, right. That was commonplace. I was used to that. Right, right. Wasn't nothing uh, about it to disturb me. I heard it all the time. Well, not all the time, but I heard it on a very regular basis. Right. Right. I'd hear my daddy praying. Mm -hmm. He spent a lot of his time in his room praying. Thank you, Lord. Well, I was laying there and I was listening to, in the back of my mind, listening to my daddy praying, probably thinking about atheism while I was listening to that, to him praying. In a little bit, I could hear my daddy speaking in another tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I laid there and I listened to that. Mm -hmm. And the thought that was in my heart, <coughs> I can tell you at that point what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. The thought that was in my heart was they wouldn't have to be anything real about that. A person could do that mm -hmm. within their self. That wouldn't have to be a supernatural power right. or a supernatural word. You see, I didn't want to believe it was real. That's I didn't right. want to That's believe right. it was a supernatural right. power right. or that it right. was any supernatural right. power. I was a naturalist. Right. I thought, nature's, that, that's all the evil. Mm -hmm. 
I was laying there listening to my daddy as they began to speak in other tongues and I was laying there and I was disbelieving. I, that's what they call it nowadays. The Bible calls it unbelieving. I was laying there in unbelief. Yeah. Listening to that in unbelief. Doubt working in my mind, in my heart. Unbelief setting up on the throne of my heart even as I was listening to the gift of the Spirit in operation. And I laid there a little bit and all of a sudden mm -hmm. there was an utterance that came forth out of that vessel on the other side of the wall. Something like I had never heard in my life. Amen. And ain't never heard nothing like that since. Never have I heard such an utterance come forth out of an earthen vessel. Amen. Shortly I got up and I walked out of my room and down deep in my heart I knew I had heard something that it wouldn't be possible for a person to do right. within their yes. own natural abilities. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. What it was is this right here, the good Holy Ghost spoke directly to the thought of my heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. He let me know if I had been able to acknowledge what he was letting me know, he let me know that, boy, I know exactly where you are. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you're thinking. <coughs> Amen. That ought to have wiped the slate clean. Mm -hmm. It ought to have wiped out that whole system of unbelief that was setting up in my heart <coughs> and in my mind. It ought to have gotten rid of it. Right. It ought to have eliminated it. And if I had made a conscious acknowledgement, it would have done it. Sure. I think this is tying in with what the brother preached and out a little bit there. Amen. If I had made a conscious acknowledgement in my heart and in my mind that that's God speaking to me, mm -hmm. it would have wiped it all yes, away, sir. brother. Yeah. And no doubt the next step I would have made would have been back in right. the right direction. Right. Mm -hmm. But you see, that acknowledgement didn't happen. I walked out of my room and I dismissed that. Or I didn't just consciously make an effort to dismiss it. It just drifted away. And I just forgot about it. Many years later, after I had walked back into the light, after that I had been delivered unto Satan and found out what it's like to taste of the torments of hell just a little bit in the present existence, And I walked back into the fullness of the glorious light Amen. of the Amen. Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. Then I looked back into mm -hmm. my past mm -hmm. and I began to see things that I had forgot about. Right. Where that the Lord, brother, mm -hmm. haunted me out right. 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 from one time to another oh, yeah. down through the line of time. That's just one experience that I could tell you about. Right. Right. Now what it took for me to get back to believing in the Lord enough to where I could be saved, Brother Dale, I had to be delivered unto Satan. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you ain't never been down that road, that's hard for you to get a hold of. Yeah, right. Fights of the business says, most likely you <laughs> can't get a hold of it. If you've not been, I'm talking about Ain't no trouble for me to get a hold of it because I've been through it. And then I received a glorious experience of salvation. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 One that the that the uh, accuser has never had the courage to challenge. <laughs> Amen. That experience that I received on January the eighth of nineteen and eighty. Amen. I laid on my face about four or five hours that night and I thought I had blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was over and done with, but they just wouldn't nothing else to do because I couldn't face mm -hmm. being lost eternally. Mm -hmm. After about four or five hours, as I said, of laying on that old rocking chair there in my mom and daddy's living room, I couldn't say nothing but have mercy. Yeah, sure. 
<laughs> that was the only word that I could utter. Glory, right. Right. Have mercy. Right. And I didn't feel like there was any mercy for me. Mm. I mean, I felt like I was. I was and I got into a trance and I lost track of where, where I was at, who was around me, what was going on. I lost track of all of that. And I began to raise up and, and to bow back over and raise back up and then I didn't realize I was even doing that. And all of a sudden, way down in the deepest part of my innermost being, I felt an instantaneous change take place. Amen. Yes, sir. And when I did, I realized right then the realization come into my mind, not an imagination, right, 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 right. but the realization right. come into my mind that my soul was saved. Amen. Amen. And immediately the realization come into my mind that my name was being written in the book of life right mm -hmm. then. And if you'd have thrown a five-gallon bucket of ice water over me, it wouldn't have took my breath away. <laughs> no more than that experience did. Right. Yeah, sure. And when I come up from there, as I said, I had an experience that the accuser has never had the yeah. courage to challenge. Come on, brother. Amen. He's challenged me in many different ways. He's told me a minute be the time. Boy, you ain't going to make it. You're going down in defeat this time. And truly, I felt like I was. Mm -hmm. It's like Brother David said, we don't want to lift up the devil around here. Right. Right. Uh, but still, <coughs> we need to acknowledge yeah. right. that the devil is much on okay. his job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he is very much yeah. concerned about accomplishing his goals. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and he's very diligent in the pursuit. Right. Of his objectives. Right. We've heard it said, mean to be the time. Have we not heard it said? The devil don't miss an opportunity. Right. Amen. Well, anyway, <clears throat> we could have many experiences and many blessings that the Lord has given us, but we're still, as we've said it all, and as we told you, as much of it as we could tell you about, we're still just nothing. Right. Just nothing. That's right. They just ain't nothing to me. Right. Yeah. The grace of God, and Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Right. And I hear preachers repeat that from time to time. You know, they think that sounds big to say that that way. Yeah. By the grace of God, I am what I am. That, that sounds, you know, they sound like Paul when they say that, you know. I told my son, I was sitting in the living room talking to my oldest son a few months ago or a year ago or so. I told him, I said, I don't say that. And I said, there's a reason why I don't say that. By the grace of God, I am what I am. I said, I don't want people looking at me and say, is that the best of God's grace? <laughs> 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 soul is stirred more and more in this day and hour that we're living in and yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm looking right. for any opportunity to lift up my Savior. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I can sing a little song, yes, you know, sir. whatever I can do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll try to sing and I've not even got the words to this, but I'll, you probably know it. I'm sure you do. It might be in this book. Uh, oh, what a savior is probably the name of it. What a savior is probably the name of it. Go ahead, we'll catch up with you.
I pretty well know it. <laughs> now, whether I've got the right gear is Whatever you want to go in. You know, D. D, you say? D. Well, that's what I'm in, so. There you go. Maybe it'll work. Yeah. One fellow's straight.
That's right. Lord Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, amen. Yes. 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 Wonderful God. Amen. Amen. Who be next? The Lord. What a Savior. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. As it comes, when it comes, amen. Glory. Yeah, I just uh, appreciate what God's done in my life. Amen. Well, I, I just, uh, I can take you to a place in my front yard when I felt the presence of the Lord. But I've strayed from there over the years. But I, I know he's real because I was right there. Amen. He came in that presence and I've marked the spot. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And I believe a lot of that because of what I've done is why I've had the trouble in this flesh. Mm -hmm. sure. There's suffering. Sure. Sicknesses I've had. <coughs> and I believe there was a young minister in this message that was mentored by our pastor who suffered in the flesh. Glory. And I'm telling you that we have to ask for forgiveness. Right. My brother Danny I was supposed to be there that morning. I was supposed to be with him when he fell off a chicken house. For something happened and I wasn't there. I don't know what, I cannot remember, but it was he and I were going there with Jacob and we were gonna take metal off his chicken house. And I asked for your forgiveness, brother. But that's always troubled me in my heart. This tie I have here. Jacob found the mm -hmm. many years ago. Always pray for the brother. Yes, sir. The young people you don't see here. Amen. You know, sometimes I have to stop and ask myself, maybe they see something. Maybe I'm out of character out of it when I'm not in the presence of the bride. Maybe they saw me do something. Amen? Maybe I did something wrong. They said, that's not real. Right. Right. Well, the brother that was just up here, man, I thought Coke was the real thing, but I believe that brother, wow. he's got the real thing, amen? Amen. and he's troubled, and he suffered for it, as we all will, right. but I just ask for your forgiveness, amen? Bless the Lord. <laughs> I believe that Hebrews 11, 5 is my favorite scripture in the Bible by Enoch, and this is it. It's a, he had a testimony that so pleased God. Yeah, man. And you need to stop and ask yourself, what is your testimony? Right. And when Brother Dick asked about a testimony the other night, it troubled me that I didn't take the opportunity to share what mm. God has done in my life. Right. Yeah. You know, I've never been without a job more than a weekend. <coughs> we prayed for me and for a job here. Right. I was staying at work one day and I was praying. I said, Lord, if it be your will, I change jobs. Give me a sign. I put my resume on monster.com years ago and after I made that prayer, 30 minutes out of the blue, a headhunter called me and asked me, do I have an opportunity, would you be interested in a job? And I hadn't spoke to anybody in five years, but I prayed in 30 minutes of Lord. Sure. Amen. 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 Sent him. Amen. I go to this company that hadn't had a profit in five years. They give you 52% of your monthly earnings and bonuses if they make the numbers. They haven't made a profit in five years. I've been with them four and a half, four years now, and from January 1, three months after I started, they paid a profit bonus every month. 52%, 37%. That's an extra check, two checks a month. And Lisa, if you're not getting tides on that, see Janet. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's worth it. <laughs> but it's, it's the Almighty God. And I, I don't see how anybody can walk around in this world right. that doesn't believe in God. Right. Yep. Sterling going through what he did. Right. The fear that he must have had in his heart. Yeah, As a young person. Sure he did. But think about somebody that doesn't even believe. Yeah. You know, when I, I tell the kids in Sunday school, my dad had brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sister Milka, 
forever over. He called, I had, we had a fight. And sometimes he'd tell me, I don't ever want to see you again. We would go two or three years and I would call him. You know, because of all these things that I didn't have here. Right. I had trouble with all the time. Now the blue, I'd walk up two or three letters. I'd say, how you doing? He said, where you been? And I said, well, you told me never come around you again. And I, you know, we were too much alike, I guess. <laughs> but I got a call one night. And uh, be hilarious, somebody wants to give you a horse. <laughs> I hadn't seen my dad in two years. And he comes driving up and calls me and says, meet me in Perry, Georgia. I got a horse for Ashley. So uh, I get down to Perry, Georgia, and he's riding around with a lady that was his gr girlfriend in high school. That should have been a sign of something to me right then. But his girlfriend in high school, he was all red-faced. He'd been drinking hard. And uh, well, I never thought anything about it. He gave me this horse, and I'm walking this horse around the rest area like a dog, because I don't know what to do with a horse. And I'm walking around <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I get the horse on and call Wade and them. I said, we got to build a fence. Yeah. <laughs> so the, all the church, I mean, was over. We were putting fence up the next day. But anyway, to get to the short of the story is, he called me and about a couple of months later. He said, I called to tell you goodbye. And this was in the afternoon. I said, where are you going? He says, I'm going to the hospital and I ain't coming out. And... Uh, You know, I didn't. I hadn't talked to him in months, so I didn't know what was going on. But this has always troubled me, so I got to give up my heart. So I, I called Sister Milka, or something happened. And Sister Milka got me one of those emergency flights down to Florida. And of course, he'd already gone in surgery, and he come out of surgery, and all the machines are doing wonderful things, and all the signs, the vital signs, are good. Well, I had to make a decision whether to remove. They said he was brain dead from the surgery and I had to remove the machine. So I called Brother Wade. I said, Brother, won't you, won't you pray with me? Because I believe that if it's God's will, right. I lay this Bible on him and I will pray and he can be risen up if sure. it's God's will. Uh -huh. But you know, he didn't have the faith I had. Right. My father didn't have the faith I had. Right. That's where he fell short. I had the faith that I that it'd be God's will he'd raise up and I believe that today if it'd been God's will. And every time I've gone through surgery, I know that I can lay down on that table and I'm gonna come out of there because I have the faith that right. God's gonna raise right. me up. Right. If he doesn't, so be it. Right. Right. But I'm gonna go in there believing and that's right. what I want right. to tell Sorry, everybody. Right. Right. And that's what I want to tell Sterling and anybody that comes across any challenges, your faith, you've got to believe. Right, right, right. right. amen. Exactly. When they talk about this world being insane, it's those people that don't believe. I don't right. see how they can get from right. day to day. Right. Yeah. I, I don't. That's right. And that's why we have the chaos and everything we have out there. Right. But I just wanted to share with you that that uh, my God is real. Amen. 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 And I, I'm standing before you. You know, I had osteomyelitis in 2007, and, and if it wasn't for my wife praying. I cried. I'd work every day, and I go home and cry out to God, "Take me!" I was in so much pain. If it wasn't for my pastor, he was there with me every minute. When they, we started going through this, they said, "Well, it might be cancer." Then they were saying all kinds of things. Right. They didn't know what it was. But I confess from the very beginning that he's working. I can tell he's working in this. I told Brother Dale. He said, "Well, it's not cancer." I said, "See, he's already started to work." Right, he had right. them confused. He had the doctors confused. Right. Him. Right. They didn't know what was going on. Right. They actually took the CDC to figure out what was going on. Center of Disease Control. But it took the prayers of the saints. Right. Amen. And the word that healed me. Right. Lord. Amen. And I just, I'm confessing to you tonight that my God is real. Amen. 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 Right. 229 with G. Amen. <clears throat> There are some things I may not know. There are some places that I can't go. But I am sure of this one. God is real, I can feel the 
seven of December. Yeah. <laughs> 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 She's in a hurry, running out of the seat. Oh. Come on, wait in June or June, you know what? Glory. Come on, children. How was it? How was it? How was it? They practiced without me yesterday, so I sang mine in the shower today. So it's really good. Really good. I, I'm not like Robbie. Robbie likes to sing with people. I sing a lot better by myself. In the shower. In the shower. In the shower. You love the Lord? Amen. We're going to be in the house of the Lord. We're getting ready to start a brand new year. Never been 2013 before, has it? What are we singing first? Okay. Let me give you a little background on this song that we're going to sing. Uh, Brother Ernest Moat was one of the first uh, uh, preachers or the pastor of the church in 1971, and Dad was the assistant. And uh, this was one of his favorite songs, and he passed on several years ago. But this is his youngest daughter. And that's his oldest daughter. I'm sorry, the reverse. But we're going to sing it in honor of him. He's my king.
We're gonna sing a few more. Sing, keep singing. Yeah, you have a copy of that? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna sing a few out. Alright. Okay. Wouldn't pay nothing for my journey now.
home a year. Brand new year. Brand new time. All right, you get into the new year, take the communion. It's a great thing. We say we take the communion. Stroke of midnight. <laughs> well, they're out there having their time hoop and going on. We just simply take the time and pause and take the communion. And just think about our Lord and Savior. That's right. What a wonderful, wonderful day. What a wonderful time it is. Glasses. I can probably read it without even looking at it, but I don't want to miss the wording. Man, you had a wonderful time tonight. Yeah. Enjoy everybody in the singing. Yeah. Being here doing, thank God for sending Brother yeah. Jason to yes, be with us and yeah. preaching for us this, yes, this weekend. Yeah. We've had a wonderful time. Yeah. And we come into a new year and have a great time of saying, Lord, we can sit back and feast upon the Word yes. and let it dwell in our hearts. But it's like our brother was saying, to hear a message is fine. But to be a message yeah. is different. That's right. Amen. Like they're saying in the message now that Brother Branham wasn't infallible. Well, I'll agree with him. <coughs> he had problems. He was a human being. Right. But the message is infallible. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. Right. The Amen. message is infallible. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the message. Amen. 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 But let's just read our scripture. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Yes. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, <laughs> This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Or for whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, I love this scripture. Yes. We should not be judged if we judge ourselves. And everything gets out of the way. Mm -hmm. But I love this. See? But when we're judged, what does it say? We're chastened to the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Amen. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that you come out together in the condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. See, it had gotten into Corinthians until they were just eating and meals and things, you know, and doing things. And Paul was chosen to set it in order. Telling them about the communion. What a wonderful thing. What about a man that was not there when the Holy Ghost originally fell? But a man that was chosen to tell us about the communion. And speak about it when others couldn't speak about it. They could tell you what happened, but he told us what it is. Amen. Listening to a tape the other day, and Brother Branham said that they were emphasizing, you know, of doing, and said, and I know this happened, that they would gather together and they would have a time together and they would listen to the writings of the Bible, the memoirs or what those big words are. And then they were encouraged to follow after that and pattern after that. And he said then the communion was passed and they partook of it. And said then when some that were sick and I'm not able to be there. Said they took the communion to their house right. and served them the communion. That's right. mm -hmm. We had a brother one time that was real sick at home, and I just felt led to do that, and we sent the communion mm -hmm. to his house that night. 
and the Lord healed him right there. Amen. Amen. I believe the word. Amen. Don't you? But said, the Bible said they come together and said, turn one for another. Let's just have a few moments of silent prayer as we pray one for the other, praying that the Lord would bless us all. If there's anything in our hearts and lives, let's get it out of the way. But we don't want to drink damnation to our own selves. Get rid of it. No one is worthy to take the communion. But God has made us worthy by His blood so that we can partake. So let's all pray together. Father, just be with each and every one of us here tonight. We know and realize that as I just said, we're not worthy for these things, but you made us worthy. You come on the scene and took our problem, our side and took our place and made everything worthy. You paid the price. You even went to hell that I don't have to go, Lord. Amen. You took everything away that I don't have to worry about it. Now as we partake of this communion in this new year, May it have a meaning of greater understanding to each and every one of us that we may, Lord, walk in your love. We thank you and we love you. We thank you for the word that we heard tonight. We ask you to bless our brother, Lord, as he continues on and going and traveling all, Lord, you take care of him and all in this blessing, God. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. The Bible said he took bread and blessed it. Father, we thank you for this bread that's been made here tonight. We know and realize that this is not your body, but it's in representation. So as we partake of this, we ask you to help us to remember. We know that your body was a manifestation of the Word of God. And it came into being. And Father, as we tonight partake of this bread, we ask you to help us to remember all of these things that we may all be what you want us to be. Sanctify the bread and the partakers in the name of Jesus Christ. I never take the communion though. <coughs> My mind doesn't go back upon the children of Israel. Now the last thing that they were getting ready to leave to go out to a land that they had not been to. The last thing they'd done was took the communion. That meaning to them that it would mean a new day, a new time, a new opportunity to be able to serve our God. That bread would be there. He never forgot them either. You know, he even came down and was the bread in the wilderness. That they could eat a natural thing, or supernatural, I guess you would call it, things, because that bread was perfect. They never had any problems. Even their shoes, the Bible says, growed with their feet. That they were journeying through the land, eating of that bread that was called manna, that was an example there of speaking of what they had done Right before they were leaving. To take the communion. Commune means to fellowship. It takes two people to fellowship. And that way then you come and you fellowship around the altar of God. You take the bread. We don't do like we used to do in the churches and we're not throwing no stones at nobody just telling it like it is. We used to in the Baptist, we would order our bread. It was made by someone else and brought in and we would keep it for months before we took the communion. And then we would just refreeze what was left over and keep it for the next time. And we found out that we're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be burned. We take the communion tonight this bread will be burned and finished before another day comes. Right. Amen. Because we know that it represents the Word of God. Amen. 
Father, we thank you for this wine. Notice went through the process of aging. The word that has come to the position now that time will not bother it, will only make it better. We realize realization this is not your blood. No more than the bread was your body. But you was telling us of a great thing that would take place. That if we partake of that bread and that we would drink this wine, that even in the natural tomorrow or even in this day, this will create blood cells that's within our bodies because of the little bread and the little wine. And as it does, then we will be able to say we are a part of this. We're not just playing a game. We're sincere about it, Lord. We ask you to sanctify the wine and the partakers that we may all be together as one in you. In Jesus' name. That's not the body and that's not the blood. But it's in representation. That's right. In representation of what our Lord and Savior done for us. When he had finished the meal they had and he turned around and not contrary as some people think that he instituted something new. Way years ago was preaching a message from it in the Old Testament showing us that even when they took that lamb and that ate and they were getting ready to leave that they actually done what we're doing. It was a manifestation there, not just a new thing to come along in the New Testament. It was a happening that was in the Word. And Jesus fulfilled it when He passed out the wine and the bread. You say, well, do we take wine? Grape juice was sour. We don't want that. It can't be a type of something eternal if it's sours on you. Set your grape juice out somewhere and watch it. It was wine. Well, I, you know, you can't do that because everybody drinks wine, but, you know, Jesus turned water into wine. For a wedding one time. But yet we don't want to have anything to do with wine or something. It's because of what we've been taught all of our life instead of being what we are. One little sip of wine, I'm not kidding. He said, if you're an alcoholic and turn and take a sip, you'll turn back to be an alcoholic. Not if you're delivered, you won't. Right. Not if you're delivered. Now, if you haven't been delivered, yes. But if you've been delivered, then all is well. A symbol. But what about in a symbol? All right. When we get there and have the wedding supper, right? Looking forward to that. Amen. You know it's going to be the communion. Amen. It's not going to be beans and taters. I don't want to mess up your doctrine. It's not like that. It's going to be the communion. Right. Unleavened bread made today, destroyed tonight or this night. And not hold it over. Because that, that little manna that they ate in the wilderness, remember they tried to hold it over. It soured on them. You can't do that. Nope. Each day has a word and a thought from God, and we must walk therein. Amen. Not a happy new year then, but let's partake together. Amen. You can be seated for a second when we get it through. We will have the foot washing tonight because. We do firmly believe in the three ordinances. Right. Foot washing, water baptism, right. and the communion. Amen. Right. But just to save time and 
not to do. We won't have the foot washing tonight. But we will go down and kind of in reverse of where they did there in the in the Bible, because in the Bible they ate a meal and then the third had the communion and went out. Well, a little different time, isn't it? So we've had the communion, and now we'll go eat some natural meal together and have a good time fellowshipping because there's no need of trying to go home and you don't have to go down to, uh, you know, Waffle House or Awful House as some call it to get you something to eat. Danny loves the Waffle House. <laughs> you don't have to go there. There's some food downstairs. We invite everybody to eat, you know, and let's all fellowship together and have a good time to pray one for another. Make sure that you tell our brother tonight how much you appreciated the message. Right. How much you appreciated the services this weekend. Right. Oh, it's been a wonderful time. Been a good time fellowshipping. You know, and all together, come find out he's just a plain old cow raiser. You know, him and Zach gets along good. They want to get a lot to talk about. But we just appreciate him, appreciate his wife coming with him. And just, they're welcome here, you know, because we believe that he's trying to do what the Lord wants him to do. Let's stand back together, have a word of prayer, go eat a while, and then go home when you like. But a good Happy New Year to you. A good time to worry that you can say, we were not out hollering like the rest. We were having a good time fellowshipping with brothers and sisters. And wouldn't it be nice for the Lord to come while we were doing those things? Could you think of any better time than His coming than to do that? See, because it's it has something to do with it, don't it? Appreciate all of you coming and having a good time. Appreciate Brother Dutch and his wife coming and being with us. Amen. And we just say, thank you, Lord, for all things, right? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this new year that we've entered into. <laughs> we look forward to it. We realize in looking forward to it, it may be the worst year that the world has ever seen. <laughs> but yet it'll be the greatest year the little bride of Jesus Christ has ever seen. Amen. Because our Savior is coming for us. Amen. And Lord, we just thank you for all things. Thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for the people gathered together. And Lord, we pray that you would go with us now as we eat some natural things, sanctify the food, and all of us together in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Make the name of Jesus with